everyone welcome back to my channel i was i was almost gonna say channel but i'm trying to stick with channel <laughs> today we're actually going to go to the women's empowerment expo this is my first time coming to this event or this expo the last time i came to something similar was the health and wellness expo that was run by the same person which is christina brophy the person that i had interviewed i think about a year ago this is my first time coming to this event she actually has like two that go around throughout the year i don't know if she's gonna do the health and wellness but i was super excited to actually go to this one because it's a little bit different and i'm excited to take you guys with me so hopefully it'll motivate you guys to come next year if you are interested in what they provide and just everything that this event has so let's go because i'm a little late <laughs> and i have to go get tested before we go in to make sure that everybody's safe and we're negative for covid all right let's go
What made me really sad is that I remember when I when I first saw you guys, I bought I think I got this one, and but it was a bigger bigger bottle. No, the same one. Are you yeah, sure? Yeah, two ounces. It was like, it was a different bottle with a white top on it. That's it. Probably, and you know what? It broke, and I was so you it or what? yeah. Oh and then and that was this was actually the only thing that really worked for like makeup stuff. Like yeah. it just was like I loved it, and I was so sad that now it broke. I was like. <laughs> Oh, you vitamin did? Vitamin C, E, and ferulic acid. So it actually plumps your skin and it makes it tighter. Oh. So this right here is the So it makes you a little tighter. Yeah, because I got the ferulic acid, it comes from the bottom of the plants. Like, it makes the plant, the plant stand still and, and, and straight. So it makes your skin, like, tighter. So you're saying that is this similar to what I got last time? It's this the one? Same one? It's the same size and everything. Because I always do two ounces, except that the other one had a white uh, cap on it. A white cap. A white cap? Yeah. Now, what would you recommend for me to do this when I get out of the shower or when I apply makeup? So, always after you shower or clean your skin, you have to do a, a serum and a moisturizer. Because I already do when a moisturizer. you do a makeup, you have to use a primer. I have exactly. a primer with uh, hyaluronic acid and multivitamins on it. So this one, when you apply it, instead of going in circles and making your skin like hot and, and absorb everything, just tamp it off. Like really oh, just I see. Come on, like this. Yeah, like that. And it will actually like all your pores will like get like uh, covered. So that's what I need. Smoother. That's what I want. Or oh, the yeah, the primer before makeup. Before makeup. So when you do makeup, just so you need some uh, like uh, a toner or a face mist. Apply a little bit, do the primer, and then do your makeup. Oh, okay. That way the makeup will last longer. And when you finish your makeup, cover your eyes and then just do a little bit of face mist all over, and then we'll seal your makeup and your face and will last longer. So you will keep it hydrated. Okay. You want to do that one? Yeah, I want to do the the primer. The primer. Mm -hmm. Right now. Oh, yeah, come on. From 38, it's 30. Okay. Thank you. You see this impact that Christina is making? She was also featured in LA Style Magazine and listed as one of the top 100 women in power in Los Angeles. Today, she's focused on her online community, organizing women's strides, support groups, and running her nonprofit organization, the Women's Empowerment Network. And on top of all of that, Christina's international work launched at the beginning of February 2021 as the co-founder of RAD, an initiative to raise awareness, advocate, and distribute feminine hygiene products to women, children, and sh shelters and refugee camps in the Middle East and soon to be Mexico. Please give it up for Christina Brophy. <laughs> Vice President of Women's Empowerment Network, Lean Alramlawi. She's a Canadian native and an advocate for women's mental, physical, and reproductive health. Her desire for societal change has inspired her tireless work to advance women's rights on a local and in an international level. Rising from FemCare's Communication Director to their Vice President, 
working on international partnerships and menstrual policy, consulting on a provincial and federal level. She's now proudly a part of the Women's Empowerment Network family, serving as the vice president alongside the amazing, inspiring team to motivate and empower women and youth to change their own lives and around the world. Please welcome Lean and Ramlawi. I'm a mom today, I'm a mom. and we're all the same age. This is amazing, y'all. Thank you so much for the work that you're both doing. It's impacting so many people, so many beings. I mean, listen, I'm very spiritual, so I'm just say beings because you're inspiring puppies. I see a puppy over here. <laughs> but listen, seriously, you're doing such incredible work. So I have some questions for both of you. So what is it that you love about the work that you do, Christina and Lee? Can I go first? <laughs> Christina always does this to me, so I'm used to it. Um, honestly, what makes me really passionate about the work you do is I grew up around gender inequalities. I've seen the challenges women go through, whether it's in households, public, or even at work. Um, and I, my first self, was experienced. I experienced it. Um, so that really made me the advocate I am. and. Um, what really makes me passionate is, you know, changing the narrative, um, and especially when you find strong women like Christina and all the women here who's trying to change the narrative. So it just makes me, you know, really passionate. So I think what makes me passionate about the work that I do, I actually never thought I would even do anything like this, um, but I, I'm going to try not to. I think every, like, for instance, like every program that we offer, I feel like I've either been close to somebody who's experienced um, a certain adversity, or I've experienced it myself. And um, like as the video said, like I started this organization when I was just, like at the lowest point in my life, and I was like, I want to get out of this place and I want to do better. And knowing that I did get myself out of that situation, and just knowing that I could do it, it just motivated me to try to help others like um, just get out of like the worst situation. So between 2000 and 2018 and 2022, I really feel like that was a point in my life where I, I feel like I kind of grew up and um, I, I, I just wanted better. So I, I went through, you know, domestic violence and um, from there, you know, getting through that, I had my battle with cancer and I think coming out of that, I. There's people who helped me when I was going through it, and so I think I wanted to, when I, I'm in a better place now, but like it just makes me want to help others.
also told our team that most donors tend to forget that they need other essentials besides food. Additionally, she has mentioned that the insignificant amount that they received from the honor club have always left them with one hard decision to make. Do they buy food or do they buy hygiene products instead?
and typically they focus on the most vulnerable communities. So they focus on uh, single family homes, so if there's a divorced family with a single mother, um, and girls that are in group homes and in foster care, because they don't have safe adult relationships, they don't have people really looking out for them. And the traffickers know this, they're very aware of this happening. And they target those girls in those types of situations. They follow them home from school. They figure out where the group homes are and they target them there. And guess what they do? They don't kidnap them a lot of times. Sometimes it happens. But a lot of times they just befriend them. They're just nice to them. They listen to them. They tell them how pretty they are. They offer to take them to lunch after school. Maybe buy them some gifts. Get their nails done. Get their hair done. Who doesn't want to feel good, right? Especially if you're in a situation where you're experiencing domestic violence at home, or your parent is going through mental illness, or there's poverty, or your parents are going through drug abuse, maybe they're drug users, maybe they're involved in gangs. And then what happens? A lot of times there's a term, it's called cupcaking or grooming, where they become close through those means that I described, through friendship and affection. And at the core, as humans, we're all the same. We all want affection. We all want love. We all want someone to pay attention to us. And they know this, and that's what they give. That's what they provide. A bond is created. These girls, a lot of times, love their new boyfriend, their new male friend. They get into these relationships way too young. And once that connection, that bond, it becomes strong. It becomes, a lot of times, one of their strongest relationships with these traffickers. And they don't know that it's a trafficker. They don't understand that. That's when the sales begin. That's when the coercion begins. That's when the manipulation and the abuse begins if they don't do what they're told. And this continues on and on. And sex trafficking uh, is the second largest industry in the world, second largest uh, illegal industry in the world, uh, second after the arms trade. Um, and, I'm oh, sorry, second after the drug trade. It ties with the arms trade. It's people making a lot of money on this business. And it's an economy. So it's just like when you go buy a product from the store, right? Some of us are, have backgrounds in sales, right? If you have a sales job, you gotta sell your product. And once you sell your product, you have to order more inventory from the warehouse or wherever, and they bring more inventory. But guess what? With the human, you don't have to necessarily buy more inventory. You can use that human over and over and keep making money on that human over and over. And the traffickers are winning. As women, we have a history of being oppressed. And it wasn't always like this. Women. Um, historically, thousands and thousands of years ago, there was uh, divine goddess cultures. And women were leaders, women ran territories, women ran towns, women held political leadership positions thousands of years ago, before the patriarchy. And at some point in history, the patriarchy really started to form and come together. And I think in the last few years, we've been hearing that word a lot, patriarchy, patriarchy, white supremacy, patriarchy. And it has become politicized, but if you take the politicization of it out of it and just focus on that word, that word in uh, the Greek culture, it means the rule of the father. So uh, that the patriarchal system is not just something that happens in America, and it's not just a white supremacy thing, it's a human thing. It's, it's a human civilization thing. It's existed, like I mentioned about slavery, it's existed throughout our history. And what does that mean? We look around the world today, we go to our jobs, uh, everything that we do, technology, um, just the world that we live in, it was built by men. And there's a lot of amazing, wonderful things in our world today. But it's also taken us away from our roots as humans. And as women, there's something different about us. And the lovely host mentioned earlier uh, that she was really proud of the lady speaking and uh, uh, she said, I don't have a child, but I feel like a mother and I'm proud. That exists within us. Whether we have children or not, it's just a part of a woman. We have that love, compassion, and nurture. 
And we need to bring more of that into the world. The world needs that. The world's thirsty for it. So this environment here, Women Empowerment Expo, together we are stronger, it's true. And there's many of us here today, uh, these ladies here, the Lady of the Journey out, I'm here, talk to us. Uh, we all have really great programs and things that you can get involved with to help. Um, one of the things that you can all do to help and create change is get involved in a program that we have for Sexy Boss Babe. Uh, it's a mentorship program for girls in foster care. We do a little fun nail day with the girls and we create a bond and trust, like the traffickers, right? But we're the mothers, we're the lovers, we're the nurturers, they need us. So if anyone is interested in doing this, there's training for this program. Um, and uh, uh, if you follow me on Instagram, my handle, get your phones out, my handle is uh, the at symbol, Arzo Yusuf, A R the Arzo Yusuf, T H E A R Z O Y U S U F. Follow me there, and in the, uh, in the bio, there's a link. Click on that link, and there's a little form to fill out if you're interested in volunteering to be a mentor for one of these girls. Prevention is so key to help these girls not get lost in the trafficking. Because if we don't intervene to help with prevention, the traffickers are gonna find them, and they already do. So we're behind. And so I'm very grateful and thankful to have this opportunity to be here so I can share this message, give a little bit of background about what the situation is and how we can actually make impact to change. So in this panel, we're gonna learn from experts about first knowing and then integrating the main pillars and categories that exist within us, from our mind and our mental health, to our body, somatic details, and to our nutrition, to our emotions, and the information that our emotions give us. Can we let that breathe for a second? The information that our emotions give us. Not just feeling it, but also knowing the information that it gives us. And the root of who we all are, really, our spirituality. Ooh, I'm excited for this conversation. All right, first up is Dr. Lori Ochoa. She studied psychology and human behavior for over 15 years and is a board-certified behavior analyst specializing in self-development, behavioral change, and life coaching. She has the training and tools to help you design and live the life you imagine. Dr. Lori Ochoa. wellness coach who specializes in emotional eating, mental and physical health to support women in all walks of life in their wellness and healing process. Jessica Guzman, come to the stage. <laughs> Stephanie Villasenor is a licensed marriage and family therapist and her goal with therapy is to assist people in need of recovery and personal growth. She focuses on inner strength and self-exploration by providing counseling services to individuals, to couples, and to families. Stephanie Diaz, and you want to come onto the stage. <laughs> T. Lopez, with more than 20 years of experience in the entertainment media, T. Lopez Purdue is taking everything She's learned and is using it to impact the world by passionately igniting vibrant sparks of hope in motherhood, in music, and in media. T. Lopez Purdue, please come to the stage. Man, all these women are so powerful. They have so much to share with us and to where we can learn from. So let's go down the line. I'd love to hear from you of how you nourish yourself in the four pillars of who we are. Our mental health, our emotional health, our spiritual health, and our physical health. T, we'll start with you. Hi, everyone. Um, I've been standing back there and peeking and everybody looks so beautiful and I've been listening to all the stories and I'm so glad to be here. A big thing for me that I've had to learn how to do is rest. And I, I think growing up, you think that that comes naturally, or people say, "Oh, you gotta take a rest, we have You gotta, you gotta like sleep when the baby sleeps, or you gotta take a break from work." And I think people think that you can just snap your fingers and do that, 
but when you're a hustler and when you grew up in a family and in a culture that thinks that that feels that if you're not bleeding you're not working hard enough that's not easy to do so I had to teach myself how to do that and resting is a practice for me and it's a tool it's a tool that I sharpen and when I think about it that way it, it gives me permission to rest and so that for me helps me in all those areas mentally physically and spiritually I think you already introduced me my name is Desi Villasenor I am a licensed marriage and family therapist so uh, connecting to those what I actually call seven pillars of self-care is really important for me as a person me as a therapist so that I can be an example for my clients um, and before that you mentioned, or before that I actually consider part of the seven pillars of self-care, I wonder if it's okay if I share the other one? Of course. Yes. Um, so the way that I kind of structure the way that I engage my own self-care and what I promote to my clients is connecting to my emotional, my cognitive or mental, physical, spiritual, communal, social, and financial self-care. So making sure that I'm being very intentional with hitting all of those pillars and being well-rounded. Sometimes in my life I feel like there's probably one piece of those that requires a little bit more attention. Um, we were actually talking about it back there, I would say rest. Um, I'd say emotional and mental is a place where I'm connecting more to my self-care. Um, but it's really about being connected to myself, recognizing what I need in the moment, recognizing where I need to put most of my energy, and then placing it into that pillar specifically. While well, still trying to be well-rounded, make sure I'm connecting with all the other seven, um, but we're human, so we don't have to be going 100% in every piece of our life. It's okay to be going 70% somewhere, and you know, maybe 20% in another. And I'm not good at math, so I'm not even going to try to be there. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to I said 7 20. I love that. We're ending there. Um, and then 10, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah. I'm going to stop now. <laughs> if I try anymore, you guys are all going to see my weaknesses, which is okay, because we all have limitations and math is mine. Um, but yeah, so I, I try to make sure that I'm well rounded with all those pieces in my life while making sure that I am being very intentional and very, very connected to what I need yeah. at the time. Hi everybody, thank you for being here. My name is Jess and I'm a certified health and wellness coach. And I love starting off by making sure that I take time to pray. First thing in the morning, prayer and meditation is that one thing for me that I was I feel missing because I got up at 4.45 in the morning to work out. I started doing that after experiencing postpartum depression with my daughter, who's now 11 years old. And I found that first thing in the morning was that time for me to, um, now that I'm looking back, go within and check in on myself. And as far as exercise goes, I didn't know what the heck I was doing at the gym, but I knew that that was a safe space for me. It, it was a time to not only move my body, but again, check in with, with myself. So I got used to doing that, um, not only as a routine for my physical health, but to check in emotionally as well. Uh, so fast forward to years later, I did shy away from that spiritual side because I thought I, I was brought up, um, or I was raised Catholic. So I shied away from it because to be honest, I didn't quite connect. I didn't understand. I had so many questions going through my mind after experiencing a lot of trauma. Um, so I shied away from that and little by little, Everything in my life led me back to prayer and meditation. And so that is one piece that is super important for me first thing in the morning. Whether I exercise or not that day, because I was so attached to um, you know, that, um, that routine, that I felt helped me connect back 
to myself, helped me to feel better physically, mentally. I was so attached to that. Um, that if I didn't exercise, it also created anxiety. So to connect back with that spiritual side, it, I mean, that's, that's honestly one thing that is a non-negotiable, is what I call it. And um, smoothies are super easy for me. It has always been super easy for me because for a long time, I wasn't only um, commuting for two hours a day, um, but I, you know, with that, I also have a background in, in, in nursing, so my hours were really long, and sometimes I would see up to 30 patients a day. So something like a smoothie first thing in the morning, you know, to get all of those nutrients in, it's what did it for me. And little by little, my uh, schedule started to change. And yeah, now I could, you know, do the egg omelets or, you know, be more creative with my meals. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, a couple of things that I think I tapped on, or I think I answered. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And Dr. Lori Ochoa. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori Ochoa, and it's such an honor and pleasure to be here. Um, so I am a specialist in behavioral psychology, and about seven years ago, I was, like many of us, wearing so many hats. Right, I'm a mom, I'm in a PhD program, I'm an entrepreneur, um, I'm a professor, so I'm wearing all these different hats, and kind of almost like this hamster on a hamster wheel, go, 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 go. And then all of a sudden, I had my son, who was born profoundly deaf, and he was only three months old, and he didn't pass his newborn, newborn hearing screening test. And it was like, everything stopped. Like the hamster wheel stopped. I couldn't go, go, go. I couldn't pretend that everything was perfect because I was feeling so much emotion, so much joy being a new mom and so much pain at the same time and so much anxiety. And so that started my wellness journey to really start to incorporate mindfulness practice into my daily life. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more later, um, but mindfulness is just checking in, going within, and seeing what's showing up for me today. What's showing up for me in this moment? Can I get present and acknowledge what I need to give myself in this moment? Is this a day where maybe I need to slow down? Is this a day where I need to ground myself and go out and be with nature and be present and allow myself to feel, because I'm human, be with my pain, be with mourning um, what I thought was going to be with my son, but is not? Or is this a day where I can get connected socially, emotionally, because I'm aligned with my values of inspiration and empowerment. So it's checking in with myself. Do any of you guys play the guitar? Raise your hand if you play the guitar. Nobody plays the guitar. It's my husband who plays the guitar. But think about the chords on a guitar. In order for it to be tuned and play, you have to tune it, right? You have to tune the guitar. So each chord, is like a domain in our life. Okay, I'm gonna check in today. How do I need to tune my health? How do I need to tune my spirituality? How do I need to tune if I need connection and community? How do I need to tune my relationship? How do I need to tune um, you know, my career? And so it's constantly checking in and tuning those chords so you can play with the, with the, with the symphony, right? You can play and, and, and live a rich and full and meaningful life. And that's the journey that I have been on for the past seven years and um, what I will continue to talk about in this panel. Beautiful. So my next question is for T. Lopez. So can you please break down the difference between general purpose and daily assignment? 
Yes, so I want to talk to all the women and men. I see a lot of men here too. I want to talk to the ones who, like Dr. Moore was saying, you wear a lot of hats. That's always been me. I feel like that's a lot of us. When I started out in the entertainment business, you know, more than 20 years ago, I started out in music. I was on tour, I was making albums. It went from that into, you know, when touring got slow, I needed to, to audition for other things. I became a television host. I found that I really loved that. I started writing my own segments. I started producing my own segments. I started creating whole new shows that didn't exist before. Um, I went into acting for a while. And, you know, all these things that we have in our career that sort of take left turns and you think, oh, well, it's kind of in the same vein. And I kind of like this too. And maybe I have this as a side hustle, but this is still my main hustle. Or maybe they switch. Maybe now this is my main hustle and this is my side hustle. Then you have, then you throw a family in there. I have three beautiful kids. Um, I have my husband, my kids. We just moved to a new house. You know, you throw all that in the mix and you feel like there are some days you start to feel really depleted of your energy because you feel like you have to be in all those places at the same time, and you kind of do. For me, it wasn't about stopping the things that I loved to do, even when I was resting. It was about figuring out what the main, what the common thread was in each of those things that was part of my purpose here on this earth. And I did something that radically changed my life, the way that I live it, my career, the choices that I make in my career, and the choices that I make for my family. I wrote myself a personal mission statement. And I never thought of doing that before. I had written a, uh, a mission statement for every single one of my businesses. When I created a new, I had my kids, I created a mom brand along with media that went to it. I created a you know biz, uh, business mission statement for that, and it was to serve this particular mom, and here's how we're gonna do it. You guys are familiar with that. Many of you in here are entrepreneurs and you want to make sure that you're streamlining everything that comes in and out of your business. But I needed to figure out how I did that with my whole life because I was so tired thinking, well, now I'm doing the mom stuff and the mom media stuff. Does that, am I still a singer? Or am I not a singer? Or am I, you know, when that's something I was not going to let go of, that was where I started. That's still part of my passion. I'm going to sing tonight. <laughs> Later <laughs> after this, I'm going to tonight. But it felt, I just needed to feel like I wasn't being pulled apart and I had to be so completely present in every place and, and, and switch the hats. I wanted it to be one big hat that everything was under. And so writing that for me, and you said it in my bio, um, I was trying to figure out what, what, it, what that common thread was in everything that I did. And I realized that it was igniting hope in others. I was in much of my life hopeless. I, I was born to two 14-year-old drug dealers. Those are my parents. They're still together and they're doing great now, but back then, <laughs> it was a hopeless situation. I didn't know if my parents were gonna come back home or not when I was at my grandma's house. My dad's in jail sometimes, sometimes he wasn't. You know, I grew up, I had, um, before I had my three beautiful kids that I have now, I had two sons, and they passed away when they were infants. They were hopeless, hopeless times in my life. And so when I see that in somebody else, I recognize it. And whether me being on this stage right now ignites a sense of hope in someone who's gone through that, whether they see me singing and I wrote a song that helps you somehow have hope to continue forward, whatever that is that people find in me, I just I kept coming to that word, hope, igniting hope in others. The other thing that it does for me, and this was a big one, is it, is it gives me an outline of what, not just to say yes to, but what to say no to. This helped me so much in my career because, I, I'm gonna say it, I'm good at what I do. I've been hey, years doing it. Good at what you do. I'm so thank you. Listen, I've just had a lot of experience, and so when someone calls me and says, we have this really great opportunity for you to host this particular show or this particular event, and it's something that's, not really in my wheelhouse where I feel like I can ignite hope in, in a way. Maybe it's just about something completely different. It's not that it's bad. It's good. I'd probably be good at it, but it would just take me sideways instead of continuing to move me forward. And when you take those sideways steps, sometimes even though they look good on the surface, it just, your energy that, or that you have for your main 
thing, your main jobs, your, your family at home just goes right out the window. And I had to learn that. I had to learn that not every great, wonderful, pays a lot of money opportunity is an opportunity for me. That's helped me so much. And it's helped me to move along quicker than I did when I was just trying to hustle over here and over there and making all the money and being seen everywhere and making sure my business was out there. It just helped me to stay on track. And so my prayer for you is to find that word, find that purpose, write it down, write down how you're currently doing it right now, and know that that, that part might change. The daily assignment, the current assignment might change. You might be doing it um, in, a, in a different business the next, next year, but you're still on track, you're still on your purpose, and it will encourage you to move forward, it will show you how far you've come, how much you're succeeding, and that purpose stays with you no matter what. It's, it's what, how I see things now is, I don't do all the things. I'm not singer, this, that, that. I do one thing. I just do it across many different platforms. And when you think of it like that and you streamline your thoughts, you will, in your, for your own mental wellness, for your own health, for your own anxiety, all of that will start to simmer down and you'll start to recognize that you're still there, you're still doing it. You're still doing what you set out to do. So that we were very... <laughs> <laughs> incredibly powerful. She believes that living in your truth is the most powerful tool you can have, and she performs her spoken word poetry at events and schools and universities all around the world. Please give it up for Daily Santana. <laughs> My to-do list is longer than I'd like to admit. It is a step-by-step -step process of all the things I like to call small accomplishments, because that's what they are to me. Everything is a daunting task. I'm an elephant. When I wake up, I weigh six tons. I cannot crawl. I am weak. Do I really need to shower? No, I'm okay for today. But brushing my teeth, doing my hair, putting mascara on my, thank God, naturally long lashes so it looks like I actually tried is a huge achievement. I barely do what I need to do. Do you know why I haven't used shaving cream in years? I don't remember the last time I did. I don't know the last time I was kind enough to my body to rub my legs in a circular motion and suddenly I'm in my 20s and this is what's a pressing crisis at 26 like, and now it's either this life forever or asking for help. Well, asking for help is all of these hands waiting to hold you, reaching out for you together in prayer for you, preaching out for you, ready to save you, but you, you can't. They'll never be able to be of service at first. You don't believe you deserve it. You're not the only one, the first or last. No one is perfect. Haven't you heard this? Now stop thinking of your diagnosis as a confinement. We're all just people that need to be reminded when you can't get out of bed in the morning because of fear, trauma, shame, guilt, endless racing thoughts. You need those people to remind you who you are and your purpose. And if you still haven't found it yet, ask yourself how you can be of service. How is your illness serving you? This isn't taboo, not anymore. I refuse to believe it anymore. If we are the mad ones, then let us laugh the loudest. But in this journey, in our terrifying self-discovery, know that you can stand in a room and you be the prize. Thank you. So many years ago, I would have never dreamed on being this stage, being on this stage and performing that poem for you. And although Nicole's doing so. Can we give her a applause? She's doing such an amazing job. Also, oh well, it was on there. It was the wrong username. If you're gonna look that up. It's connected with Catherine. Very simple. It's connected with Catherine. K A T H E R I N E. That's how you find me on Instagram. Um, but I like the picture. Um, thank you all.
so much for being patient today. I know it's been a long day, but it's been an amazing day, hasn't it? There have been so many amazing speakers here, so many amazing stories, and I know like a week ago, we had a speakers meeting with everyone, and they were like, okay, what are you gonna speak about? And everyone was going through what they were gonna speak about, and I'm like, ah, God hasn't told me yet. So yesterday, the host, Nicole, texted me, she's like, hey girl, I'm getting my note cards ready. What are you gonna speak about? I'm like, that's a great question, Nicole. Um, I don't have the answer yet. So last night, I'm like, Jesus, is this on? Like, I need something to give tomorrow. So he gave me the scripture, and I tell everyone, I don't know if I'm gonna get this back, I'm not here to baptize anyone, I'm not here to put my beliefs on you, but if you put me on a stage to share my truth, you will get some Jesus. So, this was the, the, the scripture, it was John 8, 32, and it said, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know that was a scripture. Like, we've all heard versions of this in TV and movie, right? The truth will set you free. And what's the um, Pharrell song, Lemon? Right at the beginning, he's like, the truth will set you free, but first it'll piss you off. And if you've never been pissed off by your own truth, you're not living. And then we also have other people's truth that we get pissed off by, right? Sarah on Facebook with a really offensive post who then says, I'm just speaking my truth, I'm just living my truth. So I wanted to look up, anytime I, I dive into a word, I like to look up the definition of it. So it says, truth is, the, tr the definition in everyday language, truth is typically described as things that aim to represent reality or otherwise correspond to it, such as beliefs, propositions, and definitive sentences. So if truth is based on our reality and our beliefs, it would make sense as to why everybody has their own truth. If Sarah on Facebook is like, purple is the best color ever, and Bobby comments like, no, blue is, those are each of their truths. It's true to them. And I think what happens, this internal struggle that happens, is we are hearing so much of everybody's truth. On social media, it is so loud because everybody is trying to yell their truth and make sure that their truth is truer than everybody else's. So if this is happening, how do we know what our own truth is? How do we find our own truth? Because everybody is yelling their truth the loudest. And I think the internal conflict and the war that happens between us is we now start chasing someone else's truth that looks better. We start performing somebody else's truth that looks more appealing, when really, and this is my personal belief, I think identity and truth are intertwined with each other. And if you have not gotten rooted in your true identity, how can you know what your truth is? If I were to ask one of you today, who are you? What would you tell me? Would you tell me that you are a mother? A friend, a sister, would you tell me about the position you do, your student? Would you tell me about your business? Because so often, our identity, we root it in what we do or who we are to someone else. Not even who we are to ourselves, but who we are to somebody else. And so now, we're not rooted in this identity that, that was ours, where our identity is operating out of default. It's dormant. And so we're accepting any truth in our life. Even if that truth doesn't feel good, it feels off, we know something is off about it, but we're accepting it because it is familiar. We are accepting it because it is comfortable. And this, this is where we choose to stay because it is a choice. I wanna make that very clear, I wanna emphasize. We choose to stay in this place. And this place looks different to each and every one of us in this room. And I wanna share a quote by Plato. I'm gonna get philosophical here. It says, the worst of all deception is self-deception. And I read that, and I'm like, Ooh. I'm gonna read that again. The worst of all deceptions is self-deception. When we are deceived by someone, no matter how bad that may be, there's always the possibility to find the truth. From the moment we suspect that something is wrong, we can start searching for the truth. In self-deception, the deceived and the deceiver are one and the same. Being the deceiver of myself means that I want to deceive me and I use all means available to make it happen. And it happens because I know all the ways to outsmart me. 
Self-deception is the worst kind of deception because I cannot escape from the lies I tell myself. Listen, if you follow any of my work on TikTok or Instagram or podcasts or anything, you know I am all about accountability and really just getting in touch with myself. And I say, nobody can negotiate with me like me. And really, when I'm negotiating with myself, I'm choosing to settle. And when I, because essentially when I'm negotiating, I'm choosing lesser for myself. And when I'm choosing lesser for myself, I'm choosing an okay life. Let me tell you something. An okay life was never God's plan for any of us. This is the same God that created the heavens, the universe, the stars, the world around us. He created each one of us, and we want to be with an okay love, an okay relationship, an okay job, an okay life. The math ain't math. There's a reason why you feel unsettled, not settled, because you were never meant to. There's a reason deep down you feel called to more. There's nothing more than you take away from what I say here today. Take this promise. That feeling you feel deep down like there's more, I promise you there is. I promise you there's more. And side note, you need to be okay here. You can be okay here before you get to the more. You have to find your identity here before you get there because the success isn't gonna bring it. The business isn't gonna bring it. The relationship isn't going to bring it. If you are lost in your identity here, you will be lost in your identity there. And that's a lot of work that I do with my clients. We don't have time for that. Connect it with Catherine, let me know, let's talk. But back to the more, you have to fight to get there. You have to break past your own limiting belief. You have to get past your past, because she's not going where you're going. You have to forgive yourself. You have to forgive others. Those things no longer have to be a part of your identity. What has been done before does not have to keep going with you, even though your grandmother accepted it, even though your mother struggled with it, your, your family has battled with it. It can end with you. It has been a personal mission of mine these last couple months to really focus on breaking generational strongholds, generational chains. I've got my family here today, my mom, my brother, my dad. I love them so much and I'm so grateful for their support and their love. But let me tell you something. There is a lot of pain when it comes to family. There are battles that you have to, to fight through. There are mindsets you have to break through. Even though it has been done in the past, it can end with you because I made the decision. Not only am I redefining this for myself, but for every single person that comes after me, it does not have to be repeated with you because when I decided that my truth and my identity was going to be rooted in God, I decided I was a new creation. My parents birthed me, but my creator formed me. So I am his first. My identity is in him first. I do not have to keep going down the same road and repeat the same things that have been done. If you were here for my talk earlier, I was talking about the prophet, Fat Joe, and yesterday's price not being today's price. Well, yesterday's thinking does not have to be today's thinking. If you accept it, I know Christina was saying, if you accept the same thing, you are going to keep getting the same thing. And I know that sounds like such a basic concept, but we fail so much to truly grasp that we are literally repeating the same thing by choosing familiar, by choosing comfortable, by telling ourselves the narrative that we don't have a choice. We are deceiving ourselves that we do not have a choice. We always have a choice. New choices make a new life. So I, I'm looking up um, refining yesterday of goals because I, my mission statement for my coaching is when we free ourselves, we free everyone around us. And I believe so passionately and purposely in that. That's why freedom, I know um, T was talking about her word is hope. My, my word is freedom. And I'm so passionate about each of us breaking free because it is bigger than us. So I was looking up how, we've all heard that metaphor, right? Of gold. When you are going through something hard, someone tells you like, you know, gold needs to go through fire to get purified. So I was actually looking at the process yesterday. And it's called the refining process. 
and I was reading how it's actually done, and so they mix in fire and other chemicals to uh, effectively separate gold from the impurities. Because gold wouldn't be gold with all these impurities. We need to do that as well. It's not to say that anybody in our life around us is good or bad. We do not, we're not judges. We don't get to say that. But there are people that aren't going with us into our next season. There are choices we have to make that is not going to make everybody comfortable. We are not here to make everybody comfortable. You've been called by God, and let me tell you, most of the time that calling is not comfortable. He doesn't care about your comfort. And don't worry if nobody is accepting it because most people can't even accept themselves. You don't need to be like Sarah on Facebook. And I don't know what Sarah did. I don't know what Sarah, but shout out to all the Sarahs here. But you don't need to be a Sarah on Facebook posting that. I'm unfriending everybody. Y'all can't come with me to my next season. Listen, this is a decision you made. This is the power that you're stepping into. What The impurities, and it's, again, not to say anybody is bad, but there are things that cannot go with you into this next season. And so while you are in this space, be patient with yourself. Be kind to yourself. You do not get here overnight. You are not going to evolve and grow and change. And something I tell my clients constantly, healing is a journey. It is not a destination. So please be patient with yourself. Be kind to yourself. Because the more compassion you show yourself, the more love you show yourself, the more compassion and love you will show everyone around you. So thank you so much for being here today. And um, please, connect with me. That's not, it's at Connected with Catherine. So thank you so much, you guys. So it's the end. I'm finally home. <laughs> my makeup is wearing off. You can see my pimple coming through. But you know what? Overall, the event, if I were to rate it, I will give it a 10 out of 10. I would encourage people to do the VIP experience because you get to eat. It'll encourage you to stay there longer. You get a little gift bag like how you guys saw. You got The gifts are pretty cool. I really, I really appreciated the gifts. And the speakers were really fucking amazing in my opinion like i everybody had something to say that was super inspirational motivational um something that sparks you to do certain things that maybe you've been holding off on whether it's mental health changing your lifestyle the people around you it was it was fucking amazing and i love the vendors too I actually, uh, I saw a lot of vendors that I haven't seen in a, in, a, in a long time since I went to the mental health expo that I went, I think, almost like two years ago. So that was really fun and nice. And then I also finally got to meet the owner of Homegirls. I fucking love their brand. I love their branding. I love what the things that they have on their on their t-shirts. And I bought stickers. Like, I'll show you guys. And I just had a, a, a really amazing time. And we even did, like, a photo shoot. Like, you know, they had, like, pictures for you to take. They did a 360 all that stuff was for free and yeah it was i give it a 10 out of 10 so if next year you're interested in speaking there or having your own business there to sell your stuff or just to want to go visit the place and have a good time meet new people network get to know new people i went by myself some people are a little scared they don't like to go by themselves but i've gone to by myself and luckily i reconnected with people that i've you know connected for in the past when i went by myself so you get to meet new people and you just never know where that relationship is going to take you and you support each other's business and just it's it's just amazing it was very special i really appreciate christina for creating these events and the stories that they shared and just having building this space and and i'm just excited to see how it grows throughout the years and all the other nonprofits that are presented there in general i mean i hope that they grow because what they're trying to do and what they're promoting is amazing and it's really true what they say like together we really can make an impact on certain aspects and just reach our goals and try to help humanity because like that one person said it's dry it's dry out here you know and <laughs> we need more passion love and the eagerness to help out especially for the ones that are in need and they don't have the resources thank you guys for watching for the watching till the end uh, please don't forget to subscribe comment down below what was your favorite thing if you have any questions just comment you know it helps it helps out the video like the video too as well 
And thank you again for watching this video. I'll see you guys on my next one. Bye.